Facebook. Sorry, I decided to uh, cut the uh, intro down a little bit. And sorry for the poor lighting. Um, I just need to uh, work on some improvements. I started a new job this week, so I have twice as much equipment on the same size desk. Um, and it's a little bit later in the day. Um, it's dark out, uh, of course, um, 7.41 p.m. than I am accustomed to. So uh, doing these recordings. Um, so bear with uh, kind of a cloudy me, but I think that kind of gives it a heavenly mystical type look. Um, <laughs> so we'll just go with that. Uh, today's study topic um, and came really came from uh, my morning devotion, which um, was an action-packed uh, chapter in Hebrews, chapter 11, on faith. Um, and uh, boy, I had a heck of a time consolidating that into the story cards that... Um, or stories that I do on Facebook as well as on Instagram uh, since it was so much information um, so this will be a little bit of a, a short er video um, but still I think really really relevant because um, Somewhere along the line. Okay, um, sorry for that uh, brief interruption there. I guess I uh, must have hit the touchpad um, and moved it down to another scene. But uh, definitely an action pack. So um, the title is By Faith. Uh, that's what faith can do. Um, which obviously, uh, for those of you who know Cutlass, um, the second part is actually a title of one of their songs, um, but that has nothing to do specifically with today's teaching. It's just what was on my heart um, when naming this. Um, so Hebrews chapter 11 starts out with a very powerful definition of faith um, with verse 1 starting out as now faith is the assurance okay the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen so uh, you know even though i have three verses that are part of that intro um i step back to the word assurance assurance um by any definition, I mean, I understand the English language has limitations. Um, you know, again, the example, we use the word love, Coca-Cola love, our wives love, our um, sports teams love hot dogs. Um, and the Greek and Hebrew have many, many, many other words. But faith is the assurance. To me, that sounds like the guarantee. Okay, so I'm going to read it that way. Now, faith is the guarantee of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So it's the guarantee of God's promises, um, even though we can't see them at any given moment of time while we are walking purely in faith. Um, for by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. And we know the word of God was Jesus because he was with him um, from the beginning. I'm, I'm not going to go into uh, John, so <laughs> let me keep it on on track here by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible so that basically is stating it that every
everything that you and I see each and every day in the physical at one time or another, even though it was, I guess, God's faith, um, was an act of faith because it was yet unseen. There were no trees, there were no birds, there were no you, there were no me. Um, so we are all a product and everything that we marvel over, whether it be the stars in the skies, the beautiful sunset, the moon gleaming, in the or gleaning in the middle of the night, um, the water rushing down a stream, uh, eagle soaring through the sky. Those things did not exist, so they were an act of faith that were made visible by the word of God. So, in the book. Of Hebrews Paul in chapter 11 does not just boldly profess this statement that he states in verses 1 through 3 but in addition he spends the next 36 verses citing examples of biblical truths and stories of faith, of actual people of the Bible, um, which I believe his intentions in this was to strengthen our faith by giving us relevant and practical situations of things that those who we read about in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, even though um, this it, Hebrews is the New Testament and it's not using necessarily New Testament examples, it's using Old Testament examples um, of how great lengths of trust, courage, determination, commitment, loyalty, obedience to God took place in the lives of all these people that he talks about in these 36 verses. Um, and it was all based on faith of that yet unseen, just as in the example of before creation, everything you and I see today, had we been created first, we would have, and God said, so I'm going to create the universe and I'm going to create the trees and I'm going to create the oceans and I'm going to create the animals. We would have been there in faith, trusting God for that which was yet unseen. So to me, that is just so powerful if you really, really think about that and try to grasp and get hold of that. So, um, it kind of makes this next transition a little bumpy because I kind of went off. Um, but again, revisiting the fact that Paul spends 36 verses citing examples of biblical truths and stories of faith. Um, in fact, he gets to a point in the chapter where he distinctly, and it's a rather, I mean, it's a rather long chapter, um, not as long as some, but it's, it's a rather long chapter. But he gets to 
a point where he distinctly says in verse 32, and what more shall I say? Now, he's not saying that he doesn't have more to say. What he is saying is for time would fail him to tell us of all of the things, such as the faith of Gideon, the faith of Barak, the faith of Samson, the, sa the faith of Jephthah, which I hope I pronounced that right the faith of David and the faith of Samuel, not to mention all the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, as with Mad uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar and <laughs> oh my god um, Meshach and Abednego Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego sorry I was having a, a difficult time with Shadrach uh, escaped the sword uh, were made strong out of weakness became mighty in war put foreign armies to flight flattened them just sent them off running so before bringing this chapter, chapter into a more practical application for you and I to apply in our own lives and current future situations, um, we look at those 36 verses and see how Paul shows us whether it was giving as with Cain and Abel. So an offering to God as with Cain and Abel. And while Abel was murdered by Cain out of jealousy and never specifically saw all the promises that God had made um, to them on earth, his faith of giving from the heart was the more pleasing to God and ultimately, I believe he saw everything and then some that God promised once he entered into the kingdom of God. And then Enoch, who had taken up, who was taken up um, sort of as we expect if we are alive when Jesus returns, the rapture to happen. But he was taken up and did not die because of his faith. Um, and because of his faith, he did not see death. For the scripture says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. See, in each of the stories of Paul that Paul speaks about in chapter 11, be it Abraham's faith that even when he was promised that through Isaac's offspring would be a great nation that God had promised Abraham, Abraham did not lose faith in God um, when he called him to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, the one who, through his offspring, the promises were to come because he believed that God would raise him from the dead, which he figuratively did by providing a substitute offering which for the record, um, to me is just so symbolic of what God did for you and I um, with Jesus Christ, his one and only son, sending in a substitute instead of calling us to punishment, to the sacrifice, to the slaughter. Um, he called his one and only son. So he sent in a substitute. So you see, even 
though Sarah was well beyond the age of childbearing, again, it was their faith. And I'm not saying perfect faith, for they tried to take matters into their hands with Sarah's handmaiden um, and wound up with Ishmael. Um, but still, by faith, however little it may have been with that mistake that they made, the promise that God made still made it possible even though it was unseen and even unlikely because of her age that Isaac was born. And even with Moses' parents, whom by faith took the courage to hide him for three months to save him from the death of the slaughter that was going on of all the firstborn or recently born males. And as a result, led him to being raised by Pharaoh's daughter. And then even still, when you look at Moses, when he was grown up and learned the truth, refused to call, be called, and refused the privileges of being the son of Pharaoh's daughter to come amongst his people, the chosen people of God. And as Paul said, so many others who acted by faith and many who did, not actually in the physical world, get to see the promises of God, but by faith saw the victory and trusted God's plan. For instance, Moses, because of his sin, did not actually get to see the promised land. But by faith, I am sure that he saw God's promise. And of course, in heaven, he definitely sees God or saw God's promise. So we too, as Noah did when others laugh and mock him, must also believe the promises of God both in his word and that which we know we have heard from him. Had Noah listened to the people and not built the ark, the whole story might look a bit different right now. But fortunately, our God in his infinite wisdom chooses not always the most qualified but he always chooses the willing and he knows who that is. And I'm ad-libbing a little bit here from my notes, but keep in mind that Noah, we have both the word of God and the prompting of the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Back then in Noah's time, he had God speaking to him that had to lead him. And I don't want to say that that was a disadvantage, but I do believe that we have so much more. And sometimes we lose sight of the fact that God still speaks to us while mostly through his word still speaks to us through his word. So I know myself, for instance, um, and, and quite frankly, being perfectly honest, um, I'm not quite as excited about the realization of his promise now, because I'm a human being and, you know, um, when we go through some situations um, and we're hurt by others, um, sometimes, you know, that can wound us and, and we're just human. So 
um, in and of our own flesh without his anointing, it can be difficult sometimes to love those that we know that he has called us to love. So God does still put, and he's still in the business of calling us to things and showing us things in the spirit world that are not yet seen here on earth. And while they may not even look remotely possible, do not ever forget, as I strive to never forget every single day, what I know God has shown me in the last few years. And while, I'll be honest, again, I'm not necessarily... You know, as, how would you put it, open or willing, um, on the surface, I know because I love my Lord that when the time comes, and because I trust my Lord that when the time comes for me to see that which is yet unseen, his anointing will come back over me and I will receive that blessing back into my life and I will do it with gladness and happiness. Um, so just as he has chosen each of us today and given each of us special gifts along with, as the Bible says, a measure of faith, and situations and tests in which we must be able to look and believe by faith in that yet unseen in the physical because we have the Spirit of God in us and when we walk in faith the Spirit reveals the truths about our current situations and the things that we know that God has promised us though we may not be able to yet see them. So by faith, I ask you, I beg you, I beseech you, I preach to you to fix your eyes on Jesus, for he is the author and finisher of your faith. You can trust him in your faith. Believe in the promises of God. Do not waver because of what the doctor has said. Do not waver as in recent days because of what the media has said. Do not waver um, that others may say things that contradict the very essence of the character of God or what and what he has called you to and know that you know that you know that you know the God whom never slumbers never sleeps is on the job and ready to reward as Paul says those who diligently seek him and see the plans that he has willed for each of us. And I, each of us, you and I, no matter what the situation may look like today, know that his promises will be seen. And that was by faith and is by faith that we can count on that as the many people that Paul spoke about in Hebrews chapter 11 and those that he didn't even have the time to address spoke or lived by faith and saw that 
which was yet unseen and trusted God purely on faith, not on what they saw. So hopefully that helps everybody a little bit today. Um, I hope you have a blessed Sunday. I look forward to my next video, probably going to be down to one a week, which still is uh, right up there with church. <laughs> so I don't feel so bad about that. Um, but as I mentioned, I did start a new job on Monday. Um, and I do expect, of course, that to take um, up a little bit more time than my recruiting process did so uh, I will continue of course to do my devotions every single morning um, and given the time which I do not see a problem will still continue to be able to do um, a physical post as well as the stories uh, for reflection of a savior um, for those of you who follow. Um, again, remember to uh, let your friends know about Reflection of a Savior. Um, comments, um, always welcome them. Um, I know people are watching the videos. Uh, the last two uh, had anywhere upwards of 90 full watches, which um, couple of them were pretty long so thank you um, for taking the time to listen to the message um, I hope God is able to speak to you in a helpful way through me and use me as a vessel um, but uh, again um, comments uh, feedback likes shares um, let your friends know all that good stuff. So be blessed. Love you all. And uh, I'm going to go grab me some dinner and uh, watch a little bit of television before I call it a night because I have a double service to serve at tomorrow. Um, and then I plan on doing a little bit of mountain biking on this new trail that uh, is going to be a little bit pushing it and living on the edge. But uh, hey, you know, um, God is with me and has given me a certain level of skill. Um, and hopefully I will ride within that skill range tomorrow and his blessing and his grace. Thank you. Have a great night.